All right, what is going on, everybody? We're going to dive into our next topic today, which is going to be a very important topic, and it's going to be the topic of bipolar, also known as bipolar depression. And so when you think of bipolar depression, think specifically of depression, which is maybe perhaps having an irritable mood, diminished interest in activities, perhaps significant weight or appetite changes, fatigue, feelings of worthlessness, sleep disturbances, and a diminished ability to concentrate. So that is what typically is characterized by depression. Uh, typically, if someone has been feeling these symptoms for over two weeks, uh, they may fit the the criteria that a diagnostic criteria for depression. So when you think about bipolar depression, you want to think about the holistic structure of the brain and just in general what it might look like and what you might see from someone uh, who has bipolar depression. Uh, there's just less volume in the prefrontal cortex. And because the prefrontal cortex is so important for memory and mood and personality, whenever you have any type of decreased volume in that area, some decreased levels of attention, memory, mood, as well as personality. And uh, so first we have the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Uh, so the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is very important when you think about executive functioning in terms of making decisions, uh, trying to figure out some spatial awareness. Uh, now, if we were to go into the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, let's see if we can go through there. Uh, you can see the, pre the ventral prefrontal cortex is typically associated with emotional or affective functions. Let's back up a little bit. Let's say we look at the cerebellum. So the cerebellum is involved typically in mood regulation. Uh, it's functionally connected to the prefrontal cortex through the hypothalamus. All right, so now we're gonna go deeply more into some of these brain regions. Um, remember how we talked about dopamine, how dopamine is typically a neurotransmitter that plays a really major role in regulating human behavior, mood, motivation, among uh, many other different things. It is thought to contribute towards depression. So typically people who have moderate to severe levels of depression typically have lower concentrations of dopamine within the brain. Uh, so that correlates to some of the sadness and the, and the downplay of the mood. There are several different types of dopamine receptors. We're not gonna go through all of them, uh, but you can certainly look them up online. Now, if we were to look at some of the situations that are happening within bipolar depression, again, think of dopamine, think of the mesocortical pathway, which is thought to have reduced activity with people who have depression, which results in apathy and sadness, uh, resulting in a lack of motivation and arousal. And so again, what you typically have is that these pink little things here are the dopamine transporters. And so they're uh, essentially transporting dopamine through uh, those portals. And uh, you pretty much want that dopamine to essentially bind to all of these receptors, D1, D2, and so forth. In this part here, I'm going to talk briefly about how, you know, dopamine is typically the full agonist of all the dopamine receptors, which basically means that once dopamine binds to these receptors, essentially they all bind, right? So essentially what's happening is that there are partial agonists for dopamine receptors and they have a less powerful effect on the receptors than natural dopamine. When they bind to those receptors, those partial agonists prevent the binding of the full breath or the agonist of the dopamine to its full effect. You have these receptors that are essentially uh, taking the place of other dopamine uh, neurotransmitters that could actually bind onto the molecule. And, you know, essentially what you're basically going to find is that in depression, the dopaminergic pathways have reduced activity which leads to a lack of motivation and arousal and interest. And when there, whenever there's partial agonists, those dopaminergic pathways can be regulated. And so that means that in the pathways where dopamine levels are naturally low, you have partial agonists that will increase dopaminergic activity, activating a higher amount of receptors. So that is a, a kind of a brief discussion on uh, dopamine and what's happening in bipolar depression. We didn't necessarily talk about the bipolar part, the mania or the hypomania, 
but I just wanted to really specifically focus on uh, just more of the depression part of, of bipolar since that isn't typically talked about as much, but it is a very prevalent part of bipolar depression, which I think people should definitely really take stock of. So uh, with that, I will uh, see you all in the next lecture.